of talent among pupils despite much debate on its efficacy. Ketian Strix Ingado spoke to renowned philanthropist and educationist Professor Humphrey Obora and sought his expert view on how the education sector is faring in its efforts to nurture talent as well as the value of the anthropometric kit already available in Kenya and a few other African countries. Okay, now, Professor, as a renowned philanthropist and educationist, do you think Kenya has space for talent? The first thing I need to clarify and define the meaning of talent. Unfortunately, in Africa, Kenya included, people think talent is sport, talent is music, talent is comedy. Those are just exhibited opportunities. In other words, examples where you can exhibit your unique metric values. Yes. Talent is inborn, innate. Talent is you with your human metric values and they are measurable. And we use equipment, modern technology, to determine your metric values and refine the dominant values. Those human values are known as human anthropods. And in a human, such metric values are 142, measured in a unit called GINA. So an average human has 142 GINAs of metric values. That makes you a normal person. Um, to know your talent, we don't witness what you do because that's an outcome. To know your talent, we measure just like we diagnose in a hospital. Yes, we use modern technology and equipment known as human anthropo biometric machine. Anthropo from anthropology. The word anthropology means human measurements. And the biometrics are the modern equipment that enable, in less than a minute, it takes you a picture and produces you with a signal sequence, showing how signal pass through your body to sections of your brain. Then from there we can determine who you are. And is it the right moment for the Kenyan government to be uh, absorbing and looking at talent as a way to build the economy and also absorb your system, the system that you really vouch for? Yes. With us, I accept it is the right time for them to do. I still condemn them because we have a generation wasted. The human anthropobiometric machine what first came to Kenya in Africa in the year 2010. The first machine we launched by none other than the current Chief Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi at the Hilton Hotel. 2010, 2010 to date is 13 years. It is this and previous work that I did on television, particularly in this channel, when I used to talk about the Dalk Education Program under the class program for a record six years that brought impetus to change the way we deal with quality in learning. We never at any moment talked about anything called CBC. That is something that was brought out. There was nothing to change in the original 844 system. The objective was we are having quality problems in learning and we needed methods to infuse to improve the quality of learning. But that wasted, we came up with a committee that ended up with Professor Douglas of the Ambos Commission, and we were there at, Kenya, at uh, Kenya Institute of Education. And that's when things went asunder, because some of us who thought our colleagues were in a hurry because money was coming from the World Bank and uh, United Nations were in a hurry to create something, yes, and um, we missed out the diagnostic wing. Today, what is called CBC has a problem, and the problem stems from two things. One, you are not going to say that you're going to deal with the, comp the competence of a six, seven-year-old kid when you have no methodology to know that competence. That's number one. Number two, Competence, by definition, is an outcome. Rick's competence, I see your competence as a result of things you are able to do. That means you cannot teach competence. It is an outcome. 
So the confusion is wider than you expect. If you walk to a hospital, you don't walk in to an X-ray, you don't walk in to a blood testing equipment. There is some prior diagnosis. You have to diagnose and know the exact sickness before you write a prescription and give the medication. Could you explain to us the difference between the anthropobiometric system and the current CBC system that is in the education system that we have right now? Anthropobiometric kit is just a kit. And the kit's main purpose is to determine a four, six-year-old kid what would be the career 30 years in advance. Just perhaps, because it's mentioned science, let me just excite you with how it works. Child development was the meaning. It means establishment of communication path between the body and the front of the brain, the parietal lobe, the front lobe. This front of the brain is divided into two, left and right. And there's a thin membrane subdividing to upper and lower. So we have four quadrants of thinking. The left upper side of the brain represents science. The right upper side, we call it the volcanic brain, the brain of the non-conformed. People don't follow rules. The musician, the artist, they belong there. The right lower side of the brain is called the human manual dexterity brain, the brain of the physical strength, the sportsmen, the acrobats, they belong there. And then the decision making for people like accountants, strategic thinkers on the lower left. So now see quickly. If I can see signals quickly pass, when there's an issue in your body, the channel quickly goes to the left upper side of the brain. Then you can see, I easily know you're a scientist. If it quickly goes to the right upper side, I know you're volcanic. You're more like, most likely going to be a musician, artist, or whatever, and for the rest. Okay? All careers are both those four areas, the rest are specialisms. So I only need to carve out what you'll be, and I'll see how quickly it is for me to predict careers if I had a means of seeing those signals. Can and that's. Bring the person up according to where? Yes. Now, the only missing link there, how do I see the signals? That's where the human anthropobiometric kit comes. It's a cubicle fitted with a special camera, 3D optical sensing equipment. Takes you a picture, doesn't produce the normal picture, but shows you with signal paths. Where signals pass quickly, it paints green. Ish, ish, yellow. Where the energy blockages, red. So should I see the energy green going to the left upper side of the brain, I have a scientist. Now, this front here of the brain is developed at age four. That's why I talk about that critical age. The human, that's why you can only speak about age three, four, because there's now coordination. So from age four, five, and six, a human has some communication path. There's nothing new about a human after age four. You're just growing big and enhancing communication paths. Nothing is new about a human after that. Now, that tells you I can therefore forecast the career 20, 30 years in advance, depending on age and many other things, factors that we consider. Things like prolonged labor, things like uh, uh, food cravings, which do impact signal paths when the child is still young. There are a lot of other things we do in the bag, we call it oral screenings. Then when we do this other part, which we call the psycho screening, now we find who the person is. That is the scientific bit about it. Now that equipment, I've said before, has been there since 2010. and. We should have taken advantage of that while going into this without really saying that we do CBC. Because even if you had 844, the only problem was we didn't know, we didn't diagnose the learners. So the teachers were guessing, the parents were guessing, the government was guessing. This is the issue. Now, other than what you have been able to achieve on the African continent through your system, um, what else are you able to do to add to ensuring that talents are, uh, are diagnosed, if I can put it that way, early, and also nurtured to make sure that countries actually benefit from talented individuals? When we were at KIE, I gave a document which was not used, and I gave even with that an illegal framework to be used. What we're talking is not only for education. Yeah. When we get your metric values, tricks, it's like having the measurements for a house. I can build you like a bungalow, like a story building. The matrix values if you have, now think, if you go to the United Kingdom or the US, if you want clothing and they have your measurements, they put your finger onto an equipment. They know your measurement. They say you are size UK 28. They pick your dress and have. What do you think they're doing? They have your metric values. So these metric values define the human. 
if I want to know your fitness and health and fitness for going to gym, if I have your metric values, we know it's sports. They say when Rooney is injured, he'll be out two months, three, two months, three weeks, two days. How do they know? The doctors do their bit, but for the physio, they need the metric values, and that's why those machines are there. Now, in order for this to work in Kenya, they have to stop thinking it's an education matter. It, it's a multifacet, and this is the model I gave. We need a council for human anthropometric uh, metric values, where people get assessed normally, and the education sector is a consumer. The sports is a consumer. Ministry of Labor will handle the national talent database. They have information that they can be able to deal with there. And so many other sub-departments can be able to use this. This is what we propose for the Kenyan government. And that's exactly what I'm doing currently in the neighboring countries, uh -huh. particularly Tanzania. Now, through Talanta Hela, um, the government has uh, basically acknowledged that talent is very important and deserves to be nurtured in Kenya. Uh, could you explain to us what your sentiments about that is? Well, Talanta Hela is a good thing only for the fact that they would finance um, the exhibited talents because they, they see what is there. But it is completely useless because they have no diagnosis. You see, you are not going to just see people pop up, then you jump onto them and you finance them. Same catastrophe. The only thing they think, since Churchill Jambuki has made people laugh a lot, is great and is great. Since Asiad Nyasenya was so good in what she did in the TikTok, so she's good. That's good enough. She has done a bit and she promoted herself to some level. I agree with them because they have to come from almost zero to prove their case. That makes sense. But we can't use guesswork every day tricks. A government cannot wait for guesswork for them to act. They need to have a professional approach in which people get diagnosed and we know if you went to America, they have databases of so people. I see it. I'm the World Secretary General of Talent. I see in the database, the Obamas, I see the Clintons. They were well known earlier by their governments. And government can plan and know we potentially have leaders. We potentially are going to have this many medics. At the touch of a button, when we have that, we shall query and say, okay, in these many years, these people have, these young fellows have potential to become medics. Therefore, these are the people to finance for what? That is a resource for the government. But we're not just doing that. Now, recently, still on that, the CS actually disbanded um, uh, appointed talents from the country shortly after appointing them into the Talanta Hela. What do you think about that? What, what was your opinion when you saw that happening, unfolding before the media? So Talanta Hela should have followed this kind of process, this model we are, we're talking about. And then it is not right also to do a guesswork, appoint people, and then you evoke them just like that. It's so disappointing. Yes. Yes. And sure both the Kenyans who are part of this people. Yeah. It's, it's very unfair. For particularly, I can tell you, Churchill. How would you say that they are is affordable? My, uh, is in my the common great friend. Monanchi. And uh, I've seen him come from a lot more down with Willis mm -hmm. Malaba long, long time ago. I knew them when we were very young together. And I've seen him grow. But, and, uh, to make and we're sharing ideas on what he can be able to do, how we can infuse what I have, because he's always known what I'm doing, to make it better, to talk to the government, to, to have a, a little bit of vision of what he's doing. Now he's out. What are you going to do? Because they believe if you're popular, then you can manage something. You, that's not a good yardstick. It was the wrong approach to you. As an investor um, who has passionately proved that talents can be nurtured and shaped into economically empowering abilities, um, using the anthropobiometric approach, how can this um, ac uh, centers uh, be accessed? Four years ago, I persuaded our headquarters, World Talent Federation, they donated 29 such anthropobiometric kits. What each is worth close to 250,000 US dollars. No cheap to set up. Out of the 29, as a Kenyan, seven are in Kenya. 
only one each is in all the other countries. Like we got one in Liberia, we have in Malawi, we've set up, we've set up Ghana, we're going to Zimbabwe, uh, we've done Uganda the other day, uh, we did Rwanda, you know, we did Ethiopia. Only one each location, Kenya seven, including one in the new Kinoru Stadium, yeah. uh, which is the only one in a stadium in Kenya. We got Mombasa, we got Kisumu, uh, we got Nairobi, two locations with the one, uh, the eighth one being set up in Stare Boy Center, yeah. which is the next one doing next month. I think I've done in those locations, I've mentioned work which is worth the public. And we've set up a situation where somebody who is poor is not turned away. Because we've got kids in the ghettos and there's the reason for the donation. We don't turn them away because that's what we promote them. But I need to tell you some of the people who have benefited. You have done an interview here on this television to Matthews Karungu, and that is what popped me up. Matthews was hidden by the parents in Banana because he has cerebral palsy. And we picked up the story, we followed up, and we assessed him. And today, Matthews has a bachelor's and a master's degree and is head of strategy at Communication Authority of Kenya. If that worked, if we did that to many other Kenyans, what would it be like? When we were installing in Eldred last year, I had a mother whose problem was a child who couldn't eat, took to hospitals. They said the child just has a behavioral issue. When we assessed the child, we found what's called a neural gangali twitch. During prolonged labor, signal shifted, but it affected the tongue. So sensitive are the taste buds, but the positive thing is today is being uh, reviewed for being a coffee, wine, beer taster. You know what that means. Now that's a resource for a country and Kenya is joking because such a child is a resource protected by governments in these other countries because remember you'll not make your wine in bulk until the testers approve. And they do that work in 10 minutes and you leave your 1.5 M there. True or false? Today we see on television, I'm dealing with one called Gift uh, from, from Tanzania. A child is only two and a half, three years, he hardly barely speaks. Mention, I think you saw one in your television here. Mention the president of any country that he has ever or she has ever heard about at Aquambia. Do you know what that means? They are only recorded 68 such humans on earth. That a resource. I saw people joke around with such children in Kenya. Strike those children out of this country. They'll protect them. And this is again another reason why the Kenyan government need to rethink. Africa need to rethink about their resources in humans. It is not a joke. And they got to think the direction I'm thinking and make it a national issue. And as we wind up, do you think that um, development of talent by the government and the private sector could ultimately be the antidote to unemployment? I will put it this way. Every human was given a unique capacity and we're never the same. And we say in every human, God planted your unique values. Those unique values are, we have the dominant ones and we have the subordinate ones. That's why today, in Kenya, we're talking the wrong thing, that choose your career. Mm. If you go to America, we use your dominant ones, yes. so you can even graduate with three degrees at once. It is the highest opportunity right now in Kenya to salvage the youth that were forced into careers that they were not. It is the time to salvage the adults that are being kicked out of illicit Changadens. Do you understand me? Yes. If you meet those people, they're not foolish people. You can understand the ideas they do have. Yes. What happened? These are people who are frustrated, either got shipped out of the system or they shipped themselves out, entered into wrong pursuits and finally wasting away. If we can be able to re-diagnose through the methods I'm talking about, like they did in World War II in America, let me tell you 